Welcome to another episode of the Good People Beer Club. I'm Morgan Snyder. I'm Adam Warren. Um, and today we are going to be doing, uh, actually it's a collaboration, uh, it's the age old comparison of cans versus bottles, which is better. Um, and it's Jolly Pumpkin, which uh, is from Michigan. It's like uh, this kid. From Dexter, Michigan. Yeah. And it is a collaboration with Maui Brewing Company out of, you guess, it's, uh, Hawaii. Not Utah? Nah, it's not even Texas. It's not even California. It's Hawaii, and it's awesome. Playing with my emotions. Playing with my emotions. Um, it's actually called uh, Sobre Humano. Yep. Um, which I think means superhuman? No. Sober human. Sober human? Yeah. <laughs> actually, Close enough. I looked it up, and I forgot already. That's um, all right. Right. I don't even know if it means that. I just assume it means sober humans, and it's probably a joke off that. But definitely a stellar can to say the least. They have a little skeleton on a longboard, just pad or paddleboard, I should say, just yeah. paddling away from a uh, volcano. They're actually both really cool labels. Like yeah. if you look at it, because like the the the. That's because they're both are... really freaking cool breweries. Yeah, That's they're, the they're I could... both fantastic breweries. <laughs> um, forget uh, the. It's made with Michigan cherries and um, passion fruit. But is the passion fruit? It's not. It's not necessarily passion fruit. It's a Hawaiian specific passion fruit. Um, I'm not even going to try and pronounce this, but it, it's spelled L-I-L-I-K-O apostrophe I. Liliquai? 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 Yeah. Soliloquai. So it's it's kind of this, this homage to brewing on, on different different sides of the world. Um, Definitely. So they're like they're 4,391 miles apart. Um, and yet they're, they managed to collaborate on a beer and make a beer together. Um, so I guess without further ado, we should probably, um... Kill your dog, or, dog or with... drink this beer. Uh, I think we're gonna start with the beer. Okay, so... Um, cool. so we're starting with the, uh, the Maui Brewing, simply because, well, Jolly Pumpkin is, if you've never heard of them, is famous for their sours. Um... And there are a lot of Belgian breweries that do make sour beers make Lambics, but what separates Jolly Pumpkin from the uh, rest of them is that they actually do no pitching of any yeast. It's all airborne yeast. So basically when they're brewing, they open up the uh, fermenting vats and they open up the windows in the brew house and they honestly just let all this natural bacteria just fly, natural bacteria, natural yeast fly into the vats and uh, just kind of kickstart the process naturally, which is, in in a sense, how it was sort of done back in the day in yeah. Belgium. In it still is places. done in certain certain yeah. Lambic breweries, but not very, not, rare, not very common. rarely common. Many um, will still pitch a wild yeast. <clears throat> yeah, I didn't know that they didn't pitch any wild yeast. Yeah, in there's there. no yeast pitch. But what is cool is for home brewers, usually at the bottom of the bottles, you get a little bit of sediment, and that you can actually use to kickstart. A uh, fermentation, so yeah, it's so still part of the culture. So yeah, Very you're exciting. really trying to create a uh, a clone recipe. That's that's where you would start. I actually, you know, I might I might take that. I know. <laughs> I've got I got some uh, some beer sitting around that I want to throw some wild yeast. Actually, that would be kind of crazy to do. It's really like a, a second pitch would be weird. Yeah, exactly. Like, like you, get it's what weird. Yes. <laughs> so excited now. Um. So cheers. Um. All right. I don't know. Is yours? It's cloudy. Is mine? Mine's. Yeah, this mine's. is definitely unfiltered and just freaking yeah. awesome. Which is beautiful. It's a nice like. I want to say it's like a dark golden. Yeah. It's really hard to tell. It's so cloudy. I can't even see the light through it. Um. Yeah, well, it's it. Uh, it's sort of an, it's sort of an amber. Yeah. Sort of a, yeah, an amber. I yeah, I, would I really it, can't tell with those with the. I would classify it as. I guess it's just it's an unfiltered amber. Yeah. Does it say? It's like it's <laughs> specifically ale. Okay. Yeah, this is ale. <laughs> this red. Oh, this red, red ale. There we go. Yeah. Brewed with, however you pronounce it, Lilikoi and Michigan cherries. Is ruby red in color? True. True. Tart and refreshing in flavor. But it does not say unfiltered, which it most definitely is, I'm most definitely okay with. Yeah. Oh, actually, you can see at the bottom, at least in my glass right now, I got a little bit of uh, sediment already just kind of floating yeah. at the bottom. So yeah, I've got some sediment uh, building up at the bottom as well. Huh. All right, I dig it. Let's try it. it smells fantastic. Very fruity. Yeah, definitely. You definitely get those cherries coming yeah, through. Yeah, the cherries and the bread. Mmm. I'm excited. I'm excited. Oh. 
Oh wow, that is fruity. That is really fruity, and it's I did. Like, <laughs> I felt like I just took a huge bite out of a cherry, just like cherry mm -hmm. sauce. But it's still it. There's definitely like something in there. Like I. It's not, you know what, it, it, it doesn't, it's not exactly as sour as I thought it was going to be. This is actually no. way more, it, there's a solid hop character to it. It's like, it's uh, very drying, like, on the palate, but like... Not what I expected, I like it. Yeah, I, I just love it. It's, now I'm more excited to see what the Jolly Pumpkin version is going to be, if it's right. going to be. Because I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident now, after taking a sip of this, because um, I did actually get to try this uh, back when it was bottled. Um, but I was all I was probably about five to twelve drinks deep, uh, so uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't fully remember what it tastes like. I remember really enjoying it though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I'm very excited to to see what the Jolly Pumpkin interpretation is going to be like. But um, this isn't this isn't even sour. No, yeah. not sour at all. It's, it's, it's just, just straight beer, fruity and hoppy, and I, I dig it. Like yeah. I would. Let's see, what, what's the alcohol percentage on this? Is six percent. Six percent? So, so it's slightly, slightly over sessionable, but like... Yeah, well, it makes, me would, a little, it makes me a little weird, because I've, I've had this since it was released, uh... Uh... In May? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no, you're right. It, uh, it was around May. Yeah. And then I know we actually, we received it in New York, specifically, mm -hmm. in June. It was in June. Cause, I was really excited about it, because I just moved here. Yeah, it was like, yes! <laughs> Jolly pumpkin. Um, but yeah, it's it's this it's good. I like it. I like yeah. it. Um, it did it well though. Yeah. Like it's I. Like I can see this actually going down for a little bit longer, seeing what happens over after actually aging it for probably about a year. Yeah, I, a year would be interesting. I could mm -hmm. imagine you know you'd lose a lot of the uh, hop character too. Yeah, the hops probably. would fall out, but it you know. It's one but of those things, it's fun to see what happens. Yeah, well, like, especially considering that you have, obviously, like, it's very active still. I mean, we poured it, we have sediment in our glass, like, yeah. so yeah, it would be interesting to see what would uh, become of I, it. I would imagine that, especially, like, the cherries are um, being broken down a lot more, depending on when it was added to the actual beer. Yeah. I dig it, though. This is, uh, it's quite phenomenal. Right. So, uh, fast forward, we're going to move on to the uh, Jolly Pumpkin. Um, so, you actually worked for uh, Jolly Pumpkin for a little bit, or I did. you worked. I don't know how to, what exactly your capacity was. It was, it was, it was definitely on a uh, sales side, so it was not, uh, working in the brewery by any means, which I would have loved to do, at least visit, um, but, no, I did get to learn a lot about their brewing processes and a lot about just what they do. Um, but yeah, they, they make strictly only... Uh, sour ales. Um, some of the best. In some of the best, yeah, definitely. Every every single one I've had so far is just. But not, one not thing, talking. one thing that always cracks me up is they would say, you know, everyone always, even even when I bring it up nowadays, I'm like, oh, I worked for Jolly Pumpkin. They're like, oh, they made a, like really awesome pumpkin beer, and I'm like, yeah, not <laughs> for a long time, and I'm like, w which gets me thinking, I'm like, well, what what is this fucking awesome pum pumpkin beer? that everyone seems to know about, but clearly hasn't ever had. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, they just didn't, they didn't have one for the longest time. And then, ob and then down the road, you know, they're like, all right, well, maybe we should actually do this. So they came up with La Parcela, which, which was a pumpkin beer with like cacao and other spices, but it was sour, it just, Phenomenal. It was like, really good. My, like, honestly, my go-to fall beer. Just, I don't know. I'm, well, I'm a sucker for anything sour. Yeah. Beer, tart, what have you. But, um... No, I, like... Yeah, I, I, when I, was, I first heard about them, I was like, I assumed that they were, uh... They were oh, a pumpkin yes. brewery of some form. I was like, that sounds awful. Yeah. My friend was like, no. No, they're so much better than They that. make amazing <laughs> sour beers. Yeah. They, don't, they have nothing to do with pumpkins. It's like, mm -hmm. really? Yeah, <laughs> and that's and that's always been the biggest misconception. Just like I said, it's just it cracks me up every time because people are always like, "Oh, they make that awesome pumpkin beer." I'm like, "Well, what the fuck are you?" Talking about? <laughs> what pumpkin uh, like, beer? What, what, is, what is this magic? How come I don't know about it? Everyone's had. Oh my god, I love this smell, but never existed. Yeah. Oh no, it's just. Oh like, my that, god. It smells. It smells like it's 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 obviously very tart, very sour, very yeah, funky, but like it's got it's got a really clean smell to it. Yeah, <laughs> like it, it doesn't have 
it's it has a little bit of funkiness, but like compared to some of the other sour beers, especially that I've even a, had from Jolly Pumpkin, it's it doesn't have it's a reserved. lot of reserved. Yeah, yeah. reserved reserve. Yeah, reserved funk. Which is kind <laughs> of odd because it's got six months under its belt and supposed to. Um, generally, they, those characteristics are will come out stronger yeah. as it gets older. Well, this is definitely. I mean, this, ale. This, yeah. is, this is the red ale that we were looking for and were clouded. Well, I, I, like, I think it's partially because, you know, I only poured out about uh, two-thirds of the bottle. Mm -hmm. So I've never, I haven't gotten down to the Yeah, bones. we haven't gotten down to the, the nitty-gritty, but for right now, very clean. Um, obviously, it's an unfiltered beer, but everything is settled, so it's nice and clear. Yeah, even the... As clean, a, clear, under control. Uh-oh, we're gonna get sued. Carousel! <laughs> <laughs> no, I, even the foam has kind of like a... Like a... Yes. Sorry, I tasted it without telling you. No, that's fine. That's I, took, okay. I took a tiny little sip. Okay, I did. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. That's so nice. That's that's what I was expecting out of Maui, and... Oh, my God. I don't want to say I'm, I was disappointed, but like... I, I just wish I had a little bit of, you know... A little bit of sour quality too, but yeah, you know, it's, 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 actually, well, it's a cool idea. It, it, I like the idea of having the sour version and the version that probably most people are going to want to drink. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the, most they, people with no souls will want to drink. Yeah. It, it was, at first, is I thought that they actually made a sour beer mm -hmm. on the Maui on the Maui side. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I shouldn't worry about about letting this sit for a little bit while. Sour beers are they're gonna yeah, gain some character okay. as they get older. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, right before this, I, I did a little research. Was like, this might not be a sour beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but, um, no. so I, mean, I mean, especially a lot of breweries are afraid to, to introduce wild yeast and Britannomyces to a brewery because once it's there, it's, it's there. Oh yeah, and I mean, and I mean, I I can vouch from experience that sour ales for the main consumer is a very hit or miss product. Oh yeah. I mean, again, it's. Awesome that Jolly Pumpkin has been able to sustain itself. Um, obviously, there because there's enough people that like, yeah, I mean, that know what's going on, and, and it's just it's unique. And a lot of people like I think the biggest thing that comes down to it is like when you when you're drinking a sour beer, you need to give it at least two or three sips. Let your palate adjust. Let your mouth adjust to it. I mean, otherwise, yeah, you know, it's it's just like anything else. You take one one sip and just like it just blows out your mouth, freaks out your palate. And you're scared to try it again, but yeah, give that well, second time, and it's just like, oh, now I can actually taste everything because your mouth's adjusted. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I actually had the the fortune of going out to um, California, going to Russian River with my right, family. Right. Um, and since my my whole family's wine drinkers, I thought when I went to Russian River, it'd be a really good idea to kind of introduce them to the sour, the sour side. Yeah, absolutely. And. Um, I gave them Supplication, which is personally one of my favorite sour beers. Mm -hmm. If you get the chance to try it, it is phenomenal. Um, it's Asian Pinot Noir, barrels, all that fun stuff. Nice. But I gave it to them, and they just all, they all took a sip and was like, Everyone what is, cringed. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what is this crap you're putting in my mouth? I thought you knew beer. It's like, I do know beer. I promise. Just give it a sec. Just give it another swig. Yeah. But they just they were turned off by it and they wouldn't drink anymore. Which is odd because I feel like in particular like sour beers kind of are like they're they're a slightly good transition for wine drinkers. They are. Um, um partly due to like sort of the oak aging process, part but also like really because of like the tartness and I don't know, because like like you step on like a white wine, it's acidic. You, yeah, you get you a lot of these and like you kinda of very similar. Yeah, it's exactly the same thing with this, you know, I, I think it's sort of the same bite in comparison, like, like when talking about acidity and like, you know, tannic wines and all that, like, you kind of get that from the, uh, the IBUs and the, um, just the sourness. Well, I mean, especially with, like, I don't know how Jolly Pumpkin does it, but traditionally, like, like you're going to use, in a, in, a, in a traditional lambic, you use, like, aged hops. So there's really not no bitterness quality that's added to it. All that's it's there. It's just preserving. Yeah, it's a, the preservatives that are, are that good. hops are really known for. So you like knowledge. Knowledge. Knowledge is imparted. Knowledge imparted. <laughs> yeah, uh, but it, it like it's really cool. Like they literally sit, let the they take the hops and they put them up in like like the old style lambic breweries. They literally are these old barns and they're they're 
brewing vessels are hung from the rafters. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Farmhouse so cool. Farm. Yeah. Farmhouse farm. Yeah. If you like, if you get a chance to find, if you look it up, Google it. Look up. Um, Google it. Cast Castillon. Um, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, uh, the, uh, it's the Vicarus too. Like Vicarus, the, 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 yeah. The, there, there are a lot of those are. They, both, that's also a traditional um, grocery or lambic brewery, mm -hmm. um, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Uh, and so they have them hanging from the rafters. It's covered in cobwebs. They're they're dank and dirty, but it's it's really cool. Cause and then on the, the layer up above that, they have just old hops just sitting out and just just aging. dry aging. Yeah, yeah. just like tobacco just or anything. dry hopping. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> There's well no played, well played. God! <laughs> so much humor. <laughs> so, I, I, yeah, I guess we're kind of winding down unless you got something else you want to add. No, that's pretty much it though. Um, yeah, it's just Jolly Pumpkin Brewery. It's out of Dexter, Michigan. Um, yeah. Just doing sour ales only. They're, um, they're really, they're harder to find. They're a little bit harder to find because their distribution isn't as wide. Mm -hmm. um, but if you find it in your distribution, it is definitely pick up a bottle or two of, oh, of almost anything. Like everything I've had so Truly, far. Truly, like you, you won't be disappointed. It's just so they'll, they'll take very traditional ales or not so traditional ales yeah. and just blow them out of the water with, you know, enhanced spicing and just making it a, a sour ale. And it, they're they're very unique and very cool. And um, yeah, just again, a very traditional process that is not used as widely anymore. Not to say that no one does it, but, but it's, just yeah. not as much. It's, it's very uncommon. And a lot of breweries, even if they like, they might make a sour beer and they'll do that one. But, but they'll make like a bunch of other, you know, yeah. ales besides that. Like whereas Jolly Pumpkin, all they do is sours and bomb ass labeling with, ba yeah. with all Spanish Names. They, yeah, they, every single one. Every yeah. single one. I don't know why. I don't, I don't know. If, I, 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 that's the one. No, thing no, one, no one in, in the ownership platform is Spanish, are they? Like, no. I know, <laughs> I, know, I know the head brewer, Ron Jeffries, is, that name is not, does not sound Spanish at all. Well, it's Ron Jeffries. Ron Jeffries. <laughs> uh, and then you should also check out Maui Brewing. Um, they're actually a fantastic brewery if you can ever get your hands on it. Their coconut porter is out Outstanding. of this. Yeah, so good. Like um, out of this world. Um, well, mad mad respect to my brewing company. And not not there was no intention of knocking anything about this because like it's a phenomenal brew. Um, I think I, I personally am yeah. just a little bit more partial to sours and all that. Oh, me too. Well, before a like sipable, I said, it caught me off guard. because yeah. I was expecting a sour beer. But honestly, this this tastes like this tastes like Hawaii in a can. <laughs> if if you could imagine, just just like fruity, yeah. light, nice, but also just packs a little bit of that punch. It really wants to six uh, percent alcohol. Have a few and just just relax, everyone. Just relax. Just relax. Everybody be cool. Yeah. Well, next time, uh, remember, wherever there's good people, there's good beer. Truth. Cheers. Oh, what? Cheers, camera. Cheers, people watching this. Everyone. I love all of you.